Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about the electronic security systems section. So to get to that section, you can page down and click it here, or you can click into assessment and then go down to electronic security. Now, um, electronic security is kind of an overlap section because we ask a little bit about electronic security, like whether you have a video surveillance system or whether you have an indoor alarm system or a physical control system. We ask those questions in different sections, like, you know, are, do you have cameras that are covering your perimeter? This section is more about the details of how you operate and you manage your electronic security equipment. So if you go down to here, um, I guess I had these checked already, but I'm going to recheck them. So first thing you do is you check the things you have. So if you've got a video surveillance system, now this is just general overall. You've got some, you've got a VSS somewhere on your campus. Okay, you've got an indoor alarm system, you've got a PAC system, and you've got uh, active control barriers like uh, gates and drop arms and, and things like that. So I hit save and reload. And now you see I have my section overview questions and then the four sections that we checked up here at the top. So I'm going to start with my section overview questions. So now in the, the first set of section overview questions are, are about the ownership of the systems. Now this is not as um, overly important because it we just what we want to know is sometimes if you lease systems or if you rent systems there is some maintenance that is included in the the, the lease or the rental so your choices are you can lease it you can own it or it varies from system to system this is just an overview question that is used in the reports um, are the electronic security systems on a maintenance contract again that's really just to know um, whether or not um, maintenance is built into the, the equipment that you have. Okay, so we have those questions. The first set, set of sections is the video surveillance system. So the first thing we're going to ask, now this again, is again it is an overlap of what we have before, um, you know, the, are the parking areas under a video surveillance system or the pedestrian access? But this is a little bit more detailed because this talks about some of the areas that's inside of the school. So um, indicate the areas that have video surveillance systems. So entrances and exits, loading docks, stairwells, hallways, general assembly areas, the screening checkpoints um, at the entry points, um, parking areas, pedestrian access to parking, security control stations, and other sensitive interior areas. That's the only one I'm not going to check. Okay, now, next question. Does local law enforcement have access to the video feeds? Yes or no? Um, we're just going to say yes here. Is the system monitored? So it is possible that you have different, your video surveillance system is not monitored and it's just recorded. So, but we're going to say yes, it is monitored. And when it's monitored, it's monitored by uh, dedicated trained security staff, trained but not dedicated security staff, meaning they've been trained, but they have other responsibilities in addition to monitoring the VSS. Non-security personnel, there's no real-time monitoring, and law enforcement monitoring in addition to staff. So we're going to just say we have dedicated trained security staff. Okay, what is the maximum number of screens that are monitored by the dedicated staff? This is just, do you, are, are your people trying to monitor too many screens uh, simultaneously? Again, this is just for general information to go into the report and to possibly make recommendations. So I'm going to say that one person monitors between five and eight screens. Um, is the system equipped with capabilities that aid in determination of suspicious activity? So those are systems that have anomaly detection. So did something change, you know, if you've got a hallway and there's kind of an alarm goes off at the time when somebody walks down the hallway, that would be a yes here. Okay, do you post VSS signs in use? Again, this is a yes or no overall question. It's just kind of your general policy. We do ask this question in pretty much every section that we ask about uh, your video surveillance system. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. Um, indicate the areas that have VSS in use signs. So again, this is an overlap. So a lot of times you have different people who are answering different sections of the survey. So they may not see this same question more than once, but again, um, where are your VSS and use signs? Okay, your VSS, is it a digital or is it an analog? We're going to say digital. 
Okay, indicate the types of VSS used. Does it have image intensification? And these are a check all that apply. Um, is it infrared thermal? Is it color? Is it black and white? Is it uh, functionality? Is it pan uh, tilt zoom? panoramic lens, or is it a fixed type of VSS? So I'm just gonna say we have color, pan, tilt, zoom. Okay, what is the method of transmission of the media? So is it a wireless, which is very common these days with things like ring cameras, or is it like a wired line twisted pair, telephone wire, um, coaxial, or fiber cable? So I'm gonna say we have a fiber. Does your VSS have emergency backup power? If I say yes, it's gonna ask how long is the backup power maintained? And I'm going to say uh, four hours or more. Is the emergency backup power tested at least annually? I'm going to say yes. And then one of the questions, again, this is one of those overlap questions, does the VSS have anomaly detections? That was actually one of our check boxes. So if I say yes here, then we're going to go on to our VSS components positioned to limit physical access, M meaning are the, kids being a, are the kids able to reach up and pull down your uh, VSS cameras? And we're going to say no. Um, is it recorded? So I'm going to say yes, and then it's going to ask us how is it recorded. Is it digital or analog? So I'm going to say digital. Is there a policy for review of the recorded information? I'm going to say yes. We're going to say how often is it performed? We're going to say it's periodical, periodically. Um, how long is the information stored? So you notice that these questions are really different than um, what we ask. So we don't ask you how long you store the VSS that's at the perimeter security. These are your overall policies. So we're going to say we store it from 8 to 29 days. Uh, when was the most recent update of your VSS performed? We're going to say more than five years. Is it performed and tested according to the maintenance schedule? We're going to say yes. Is it tested periodically? We're going to say yes. And then when you do say yes there, it's going to add another question that says, is the testing conducted at least annually? So we're going to say yes. Um, how often are critical components that are inoperable replaced or repaired? That Really, I mean, I think that the wording of this question should be more like how soon are the critical components? So this is, are they repaired within 12 hours? Does it take 24 hours? Um, does it take more than five business days to fix components that are broken? So that's kind of what we want. I'm going to say within 12 hours. Are the critical VSS components in a locked tamper-proof container with a tamper switch? Meaning, um, you've got your DVR that is recording everything. Is it locked? Is, is it in a secure area? So we're going to say yes. Um, is access to the VSS critical components controlled and documented? We'll say no here. Can the VSS cameras be controlled from anywhere other than inside the building in which they're located? We're going to say yes. Does access to images and or camera controls require an internet browser? We're going to say yes. Does the system or components require a username or password to log in? We're going to say yes. And then how often is that password changed? Um, we're going to say never because that is something we run into a lot. Does the VSS have any wireless components? And we're going to say yes. Um, are all components in the VSS checked for firmware updates on a recurring basis? We're going to say yes. When was the last firmware update? We're going to say one to three years. Does the VSS have a system security plan? We're going to say yes. And then does the VSS integrate with another system? And we're going to say no. So you notice there are definitely a lot of questions on the overall uh, management of your video surveillance systems. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next section, or the next part of this section, which is, let me just close this, this is definitely in the way. Okay, now we're into the indoor alarm system, your intrusion detection system. Okay, are there interior motion sensors? We're going to say no. Are there proximity sensors? We're going to say no. Are there door sensors? We're going to say yes. Okay, if you say yes to your door sensors, it is going to ask you, do you have a glass break sensor, a vibration sock sensor, magnetic contacts, or contact sensor? So I'm going to say we have magnetic contacts, and I'm actually going to go back up um, to these other ones. So if we have 
proximity sensors, it's going to ask, are they pressure or capacitance? I'm going to say it's pressure. And for the interior motion sensors, if you ask yes, it's going to say what type are they? So are they ultrasonic noise detection, microwave, sonic, or passive infrared? So I'm going to say they are um, sonic. Okay. Um, so the location of your proximity sensor, if you answered that, where are they? Are they the windows, the entrances, any combination of above? The coverage of your proximity sensor, we're going to say it is 26 to 50%. Okay, coverage of your doors that have sensors. I kind of did this out of order. I apologize for that. Um, we're going to, uh, because I didn't originally answer these yes. Coverage of the doors that have sensors, 26 to 50%. Are there window sensors? We're going to say yes. Okay, what type do you have? Do you have a glass break sensor, a vibration shock sensor, magnetic contacts, or a contact sensor? We're going to say we have a glass break sensor. Um, the locations that have window sensors, your critical areas, your entire ground floor, and any combination of above. So we're going to say the entire ground floor. Coverage of the window sensors, we're going to say is 51 to 75%. Okay, your characteristics of your intrusion detection system. Is it continuously monitored on-site, continuously monitored off-site, is backup power provided. Okay, um, these should be checkboxes, so by the time you see these, this video, these will be checkboxes. I don't know what happened that changed them back. So, um, so you're gonna check all of these that apply. Okay, does the alarm system communicate to a central station, and how does it do it? So does it communicate with a regular phone line, via cellular, voice over IP, internet, local area network, or no communications. I'm going to say it uses a local area network. Okay, does the IDS have a security plan? We're going to say yes. Can the IDS be remotely accessed? We're going to say no. Can the interior IDS be remotely accessed? We're going to say yes. Are the alarm IDS, are the interior IDS alarms monitored through a computer workstation? We're going to say yes. Are all components in the interior IDS checked for software and firmware updates on a regular basis? We're going to say yes. When was the last firmware update um, completed? We're going to say two years ago. Okay, so you notice there's definitely a lot of questions to this section, and there are a lot of detailed um, questions. So if you get to this, this situation where you don't know how to answer a certain question, please uh, just add a comment and reach out to us. Uh, the other thing is, um, this is a case where your vendor, um, whoever sold you or whoever maintains your IDS, um, can definitely help. Okay, so now we're going to talk about PAC systems. These are your physical access control systems. These are the things like um, your key cards to get into different areas. Um, so there's a, definitely going to be a bunch of questions on this. So let's go into the physical access control systems questions. Okay, where do you have PACS systems? Your main entrances, your convenience entrances, the security offices, the interior main offices, your classrooms, your maintenance facilities, your dock and delivery, your cafeteria, your library, your interior sports facility, and nurse's office. And I'm gonna pretty much say we don't have them at the main entrance. Uh, we definitely have them at the security office. Um, we have them at the main office. We don't have them at the classrooms, but we do have them in parts of the cafeteria, parts of the library, and the nurse's office. Okay, what type of access controls are used at the system? Key card readers or pin and passcode, swipe card readers, radio frequency RFID and key fob, biometric readers, and smart labs. So we're gonna say we have um, swipe card readers. Okay, can the PACs be remotely controlled? We're gonna say no. Can it be remotely accessed? We're gonna say no. Does it require an internet browser for access? We're gonna say yes. And yes, it does require a username and password to log in. Okay, how often is the password changed? I'm just gonna go with the old never because that's the one I, I see more than anything else. Uh, does the PACs have any wireless components? We're gonna say no, it does not. Does it have a system security plan? We're gonna say yes. Are they checked for software and firmware updates on a recurring basis? We're gonna say yes, and within the last year. 
Okay, so there's definitely a lot to your physical access control systems. Okay, so okay, so we're going to close the questions for the PACs, and we're going to go on to active barriers. Now, active. Okay, so with the active barriers, we're going to hit show questions. Okay, are your barrier systems controlled through a network connection? We're going to say yes. Is it ID actuated or connected to your uh, physical access control system? We're going to say yes. Can the barriers be remotely controlled? We're going to say yes. Can any of the barrier components communicate wireless? And we're just going to keep hitting yes. Is the barrier integrated through a security system application? We're going to say yes. And is the barrier, is the barrier system monitored by a video surveillance system? And we're just going to say no on that one. Okay, so that actually concludes the electronic security system. So again, there are a lot of questions. Um, don't don't be concerned if you don't know how to answer all the questions. These are, we're starting to get into the sections that are a little bit more difficult to answer, but um, you know, we just get them answered and they get integrated in the report and if we need to change things, uh, it's easy enough to do. All right, so we're gonna be on to the next section.